Uh, perforce. A lot of our students are a bit uncomfortable with Perforce. We don't have as much experience in Perforce as we do with GitHub. And so I'm just working on a little something and I'm doing some Perforce work with it. And so I thought I'd share in case this could be enlightening for you. Let's see the project. Okay, I have just a little sample project here. Okay, very cool stuff. All right, as I'm working in here, I have integrated Perforce with, Visual, with uh, Unity. Let's see if we can find that. Uh, project settings, version control. And so this is where you enter your version control information right here. So let's, let's just add a, add a 3D object cube to the scene. And when we save that, um, we will find that has checked out your files. So let's look at it in Perforce. Um, something that you notice is when you do check out a thing, Perforce doesn't automatically refresh, but there's a refresh button right there. And you can see that I just changed showcase scene.unity. And when I hit save here in Unity, it checked it out for me and they'll appear in your default change list. Um, changes that you make in script though, the, the, way, the way I'm gonna run script changes is, let's, let's make some edit to a script. What do we got here? It's demo controls, disable shadows is a, is a script. Let's say I wanna edit that. I open it here in Visual Studio um, just by double clicking it. But if I make an edit, I don't know, string hello world equals hello world. It lets me, lets me make that edit, no problem, but then when I hit save, bung, it's gonna say, hey, what, what's going on? What just happened here is Visual Studio notices that this file is locked, it's not writable. Perforce makes your files not writable. So suggestions, you can do the the integration, Perforce integration in Visual Studio, if you're using Visual Studio or find an integration that works with you. What I tend to do is I have installed the, um, the Explorer integration, which allows me to, um, to just right click on the file I wanna save right here and check it out from my menu right there. So there you go, I can check out that file and now now I can save it. Okay, so uh, that's what I tend to do. Um, let's go and undo that change because I don't want it. I'm gonna go back to my Perforce client and I hit refresh. There's that change and there's this other change I don't want. Uh, I'm gonna change the scene so I'm more comfortable just close down Unity. One of the things I find is that when you close Unity, there might be some last minute saves it's gonna wanna do. So closing it, make sure that takes place. All right, that's all closed. Um, we could close this too, but I, I, we wanna make sure we don't have any unsaved files. So we'll do that by closing it down. Okay, um, let's refresh now. Next up, change list, check it out. I have a couple things in my default change list that I don't want. These were examples I just did right now. So let's revert those. Um, this won't matter at this point, but if these were ads that I was doing, I would want to unadd them, which would mean delete them from my hard drive. Okay, what else? Um, <clears throat> you'll see I have multiple change lists already because I've been working a little bit and I've organized them by what the change does. I've seen at this point, uh, student work, very often the comments are just a pain. They're just like, stupid statements that don't mean anything. Start thinking instead. List out exactly what you're doing as the name of your change list and organize your change list by as an atomic change. For example, this is the code that I was writing. I was moving some code from one place to another. It was in the, there was some code in the controller, in the character controller, that I wanted to move to the input system instead. And so I've touched these files. And then these are all the prefabs that were affected by that. So if I were to change, if I were to check in this code without these prefabs, 
everyone else's games would not work. Um, so this, I've tested this, I, I'm pretty confident with this, this works, so I will submit it as a custom change list. When you make changes in Unity, they just go into your default change list. So let's move them out of our default change list. So for example, what is all this with the forward renderer and stuff? Frankly, I did not do that on purpose at all. That just happened when I opened Unity. I suspect it's because I opened a different version of Unity than my team is working on. Um, and you probably want to avoid that, but you know, that's, that's how I roll. So um, I'm going to move that to another change list. I'm going to call that uh, up grading unity that's what caused that and there they are now over here and i might um i might just do this let's say um, i'm just viewing it right i'm gonna edit that change list i'm gonna say do not check in as a reminder to myself because i think that happened when i updated my version of unity from what the team is using. I don't want them to have to deal with my mess. So I'm just gonna keep that checked out. Okay, um, this one happened when I turned on uh, Perforce sharing, and I do think my team wants that. So uh, let's, let's, uh, let's submit that. Enabled Perforce sharing. Uh, oh, that's fine. All right, they'll pick that up. And now uh, let's give the team my code. So I will submit my change list and you'll see that the name of the change list is the comment. It is the description that you put in that so many of you have been kind of ignoring all this time. So there you go. All right, uh, and this last one, updating Visual Studio integration package. I'm not sure what that's, whether that's going to be you know, compatible with my update or not, but I think it, I think it probably is. Worst case, I'll roll it back if my team complains. So let's do that. So you'll see that I have now um, window view view history. I have now made some changes. Let's sort by date submitted here. So my most recent changes go at the top, and you can see that I've put in three separate changes with three separate concepts. So instead of just piling in, just check it all in, as I know that many of you are used to doing, check it in atomically. Main reason, what if, what if Batu here comes back and says, oh, hey, that, that update to Visual Studio integration, it caused all kinds of problems. It doesn't work with my version. What will I do? Oh no, I'll just want to revert that. And so I can just undo those changes uh, and I can because I check them in atomically I can click on the change itself and just undo that entire change I don't have to go cherry picking through it um, and let's uh, let's go through that I will make a new change list and that new change list is the undo of the previous thing the the beauty of that is now I can I can boot up the project, I can verify that this undo is good, and then as long as it's solid and seems clean, I can then commit it. I'll submit that, and there you go, Perforce is happy, we'll put it back the way it was, and we'll see that in the history. Um, I actually don't want to though, so I will just revert this change list. It's now empty, and I'll delete the change list. Boom because I didn't actually want to do that. Okay, so that's a, a few little tidbits about Perforce and how to maximize your experience using it. Um, first thing, uh, or one thing, just to toss out there for you, was watching somebody work in Perforce using Unity yesterday. They, the team had Unity integration set up, but what they did not do was use the Perforce client. So I want to encourage you to Start jumping into the Perforce client directly, uh, get comfortable with it, and rely on it. Rely on it to check what you're doing at each step. Look at your changes before you commit them. Um, it's a very good idea before you commit 
to go through and check every single file. Yes, I'm changing it on purpose. I'm changing that on purpose. And for you coders, look at your code script and say, yes, I'm changing that on purpose. And uh, look at your diff. Before you commit, you say, what exactly am I about to commit? Because something I'm totally guilty of is uh, committing a bunch of uh, test code. I, I, I commented out something or I added a bunch of print statements that were just because I was debugging something and then I accidentally commit those. So it's a good idea to look at your code before you commit it and say, yes, I want all those changes. Now I will commit. Okay. See you next time.